Hey, I'm glad you're joining our digital worship. This is simple. Just a little scripture, some music, and some spiritual words. I hope it'll bring you some peace and then some courage for us to make a better world. Let's start with a beautiful little song by Will Hutchinson called Just a Bird. It's about a bird who's facing difficulties in life but keeps on singing. Oh, I'm just a bird on a power line Singing to myself and the quiet sky Fall has fallen, I forgot to fly South on the wind to paradise They tell me that my dream have flown beneath my feet but this I won't believe so I'll keep on singing my sweet melody oh I'm just a bird flying nine to five singing to myself and wasting time the stronger birds are out of sight i'm shopping for my collar and tie they tell me that my dream have flown beneath my feet but this Just a bird with doors open wide, no ceiling could ever hide. The azure skies nested in my eyes. I'm on my way to paradise. They tell. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for them and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. 
Let us join together in prayer. Lord, we know what it feels like to weep, to be sad, to have our hopes and our dreams defeated or changed. We have all experienced heartache, times of struggle, and times we felt hopeless. We are learning to accept that we are not in control and we certainly do not have all the answers. So we cease, we yield, and we surrender to you, God. It is through our trust in you we begin to discover the freedom to just let go and to live, to begin to dream again, to hope, to notice the newness in each day, every day, to discover the wealth that comes from fellowship, friendships, and family, which satisfies our soul and turns emptiness into fullness. Lord, we could all write the psalmist's words, restore our laughter and fill us with shouts of joy. Lord, may each of us find joy in our journey, just knowing that your arms are wrapped around us with love. In your name we pray, amen. I want to tell you a few religious jokes and then make some spiritual points, but be forewarned. Religious jokes are almost always kind of lame. I, I don't know why. They all sound like dad jokes, but I'm a dad, so here we go. A man was talking to God. The man said, God. What is a million years like to you? God said, about a minute. Then the man says to God, God, what is a million dollars like to you? God says, about a penny. And then the man says, God, can I have a penny? And then God says, yeah, in a minute. Lame joke. But here, a spiritual point, that joke is trying to play on the infinite nature of God. This has always been, from the ancient church on, a key attribute that Christians give to understand that God has, infinity. And once you consider that God is infinite, that does away with any silly, overly literal notions of God. Consider this. When we say that God is infinite, that means God is not a thing in the universe. Like those ridiculous images of an old man with a beard up on a cloud. When you say God is infinite, God is not a thing alongside other things. God is infinite. It takes it beyond the grasp of any finite mind. Think how sublime this attribute of God is. From the ancient church on, the Christianity has had profoundly sublime notions of God, and yet we still hear people critiquing it for silly notions of God. Oh no, consider the infinity. If you think God is infinite, you can't simply say God exists, because in English, when you say something exists, you mean it's a thing alongside other things. So God, in English in a way, does not exist. God is existence itself. God is infinite. Do you hear how sublime that is? The joke wasn't, though. <laughs> uh, uh, next joke. A priest, a minister, and a rabbi decide to see who is best at their job. So they decide they'll each go into the woods, find a bear, and see if they can convert it. And then they get back together and compare notes. First, the priest says, yeah, I found a bear by a stream, and I taught that bear the entire holy catechism. He's coming to my church next week for First Communion. Then the minister says, well, I found a bear too, and I preached him the entire gospel, and I baptized that bear. And then both the priest and the minister look down at the rabbi, who's in a full body cast on a gurney, and the rabbi says, 
I guess it would have been better if I didn't start with circumcision. Really lame joke. But consider with me, those old jokes that talk about a priest, a rabbi, and a minister, they're based on an old notion of what represents religious diversity in America, right? Just Protestantism, Roman Catholicism, and Judaism. But America has become much more diverse. Consider, there are almost four million Muslims in America. Christianity is the world's largest religion, but in second is Islam, and Islam is a large part of America now. Those silly jokes, it shouldn't just be a minister and priest and rabbi anymore. There should be imams in those silly jokes. But it's not just Islam. Christianity has become profoundly diverse in spiritual perspectives, not just with the world religions like Buddhism and Hinduism, but with the rise of people that are spiritual and not religious, so many different spiritualities at play. My intuition tells me this is not something to fear, that that, that diversity creates a richness, a tapestry, the and can inform our own Christian faith. Okay, next silly joke. A Buddhist walks up to a hot dog stand and says, Make me one with everything. Actually, I kind of like that joke, mostly because it's just funny about a Buddhist getting a hot dog, I think. But I love, I love the mystical impulse in that. Make me one with everything. You know, it's not just Buddhism that has a mystical essence. Christianity has precisely that same impulse that we can feel deeply at one with all that is, with God. The mystical impulse that religion isn't about just some thoughts in your head, it's something you can experience. Scholars call mysticism the unitive experience, when a person suddenly feels part of something larger than themselves. Christianity seems like it emphasizes theology. That's God talk, theologos talking about God and trying to put spirituality into words. Mysticism acknowledges that in the, our, the essence, our faith is beyond words. And our faith is more about feelings and experiences. Our faith is a subjectivity, not so much a bunch of theology. You know, there's another lame joke too about what do you get when you cross a Unitarian with a Jehovah's Witness? Someone who knocks on your door and has nothing to say? Now when I first hear that joke I think it sounds like it's dissing Unitarians and I don't want to diss Unitarians. But in fact this idea of not really having anything to say that's the mystical insight. You can't put words on God really. Meister Eckhart, the great 13th century Christian mystic, said, quit flapping your gums about God. We should first fall silent and realize God is beyond words. Okay, last lame joke. A man sees another man up on a bridge about to jump off and commit suicide, so he rushes up there to try to talk, talk him off the ledge. He says, don't jump, don't jump. Do you believe in God? And the man says, I, I do. Well, then don't jump. We, we have this in common, our faith. Uh, are you Christian? And the man about to commit suicide says, I am Christian. And the other guy says, well, me too, brother. Don't jump. Then he asks him, well, are you Protestant or Roman Catholic? And the man on the edge says, I'm Protestant. The other guy says, well, me too. Look how much we have in common. Don't jump. And then he goes, well, wait a minute. What kind of Protestant are you? And the man on the edge says, I'm Baptist. And the other guy goes, me too. Well, wait a minute. Are you Northern Baptist or Southern Baptist? And the man on the edge says, I'm Northern Baptist. Me too. That's awesome. Don't jump. We have so much to come. Well, wait a minute. Are you Northern Baptist Great Lakes region? And the other man says, 
I am. This is unbelievable. Don't jump. Wait, are you Northern Baptist Great Lakes Region Council of 1879 or Council of 1901? And the man on the edge says, I'm Northern Baptist Great Lakes Region Council 1879. Well, me, me too. Look how much we have in common. Don't jump. Well, wait a minute. Are you liberal Northern Baptist Great Lakes Region Council 1879 or conservative Northern Baptist Great Lakes? And the man says, I'm conservative. And the other man says, jump, you heretic. Lame joke. But do you see what that joke is seizing upon? This, this notion that Christian groups tend to think they're superior to other Christian groups. This is an infection in the, in the Christian mind. We... Why do we always think we're superior than some other form of Christianity? In Luke chapter 22, the disciples are arguing about whether they are the greatest, and Jesus chastises them. And yet we replicate that scene again and again when we imagine the Christian group that we're part of is somehow superior to others. Even across all liberal and conservative perspectives, any Christian church thinks it's a better Christian church. What we should work on is being the most humble, gentle, inclusive. That joke is seizing upon how Christianity tends to fracture into many different perspectives. Do you know there are some 40,000 denominations in the world? There's something about that endless factions and tribes that seems like we lose sight of how much we share. We're all seeking to follow Jesus Christ. Sometimes I wish we could get back to the simple, most basic things. In the end, I don't really care that much what denomination or tradition you're part of in the Christian faith. Together, you and I, we're trying to follow in His way. And that's beautiful. Just plain beautiful. Amen. shall not fear the arrow by day, nor shall I fear the terror by night. The God who governs angel armies has set in cavalry
Wow, is that an inspiring song. And I hope you go forth this week and hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Surrender your anxious cares to God and find your joy in serving others. Go in peace.